in today's class, I'm going to use the term security. But I might say the euro, I might say Bitcoin, I might say Facebook, but I'm not referring to any particular asset. Okay. I am talking about all publicly traded financial assets in which there's an open market. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. Typically, an investor takes a long-term position while a trader takes a much shorter-term position. We know the difference. Most of us here in the audience are traders. We're either day traders, short-term traders, or swing traders. But what we're going to learn today will apply to any of your trading or investing. Now, no matter where I go, whether I'm going to a seminar, whether I'm giving a webinar, whether I'm attending a conference, whether I'm meeting traders one-on-one, -on -one, seems like the first thing people ask me is, what should I buy today? What will prices be tomorrow? What will they be next week? Well, I don't have a Ouija board and I don't have a crystal ball and nobody who tells you they do, can you follow, take you know, on their word. Trading is all about managing your trade. It's about understanding your risk and your reward and making very conscious decisions. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we're human beings. We're forcing we're human beings. But unfortunately, we get involved in emotion. We also have a way of skipping steps or not seeing everything and ju jumping to conclusions. Now, this is a very dangerous thing for traders because that's when you're apt to make mistakes. Now, in today's class, I like this class. I give this class quite often. And it's part of one of the lectures I give when I'm doing some type of academy for somebody. It's very, very important. Sometimes I feel like a parent lecturing their child when they're giving this class. And I don't mean it to be that way. But this is so vitally important. And then I find that most traders don't do this. Okay. Now, if you talk to the successful traders, you'll find that over time they've written a plan together. Okay. Novice traders and beginners don't do this. They just want to jump in and trade. And even if they have a good understanding of the markets, they don't have a good understanding of their overall trading decisions. So in order to become a successful trader, you need to develop a written trading plan where you put all your necessary trading rules. And we're not talking about just a strategy. We're talking about your rules. Basically, a trading plan is your trading Bible. Now, you don't have to write it down in specific formats. You, I mean, if you come to my office, you'd see files and files and files of index cards. You see boxes of books. I've been writing this stuff down for years. But you know, today, we're all very lucky because we have PCs, we have the internet, we have Excel spreadsheets, we have all kinds of things that we can set up and sort and pull data around and it'll keep track of everything for us. And didn't have that when I started trading. We'd put everything on index cards, put notes down. Didn't even have sticky notes. We just had index cards and this metal index file box. And you'd have to put them in down with dividers in there. And when you wanted to find something you wanted to do or a strategy you tried before, a pattern that was reappearing, you had to go through all these index cards to find. Today, you could set up an Excel spreadsheet and track all of your trades, all of your strategies, all your adjustments, everything. So when you see something reappearing in the market that happened, ah, you remember, you know what, last year the euro was down at 110 before. And I remember this happening. And you can go right there and see exactly what you did. Now, this sounds ridiculous, but the fact is trading is about human psychology and humans tend to repeat themselves over and over. Now, there is no such thing as an ultimate trading plan because there are no two exactly the same traders and every trade has a different trading style, strategy, risk tolerance level and market experience. It's always better to develop one's own personalized trading plan and modify it as your experience experience grows. Now, this is where I end up losing a lot of traders because they say, or it's just the idea of all of this work and then they get confounded to where do you go? So today I'm gonna to use the analogy of a guy who wants to open up a women's dress store in a mall. Okay. I don't know why. This guy has always imagined 
having this little shop in the mall. He's got a career. He's been working for 40 years. His kids are all finished college. His wife is about to retire. And this is one of the things he's always wanted to do. And he's walking through the mall one day. And here is the perfect location and it's empty. Whatever store was in there was gone. There's a for rent sign and something in his head tells him it's for him. He goes home and he does some rough calculations in his head. He figures he's gonna need a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand dollars to get a, a place open. He thinks about his inventory, he thinks about his sign, he thinks about you know odd and things. Okay. Well, he's got an extra fifty thousand dollars in his you know rainy day account. He could take some money out of his retirement account. His wife will probably kill him, and she'll talk to him. He'll talk to her first. But he can borrow, probably get his parents to invest fifty thousand, his brother to invest fifty thousand. So in his head, he's got the idea he can do this. He tells it to his wife. She says, "You know, honey, you've worked hard all your life. It's your money. You want to do this? Go for it." So he calls his folks on the phone. They say, yeah, we can give you 50,000, invest 50,000 in your shop. He calls his brother and his brother says, yeah. And then his buddy says, yeah, and he's got all of his money now. Okay. I'm sorry if the story's a little long, but it does have a point. Now, he calls the, the number on the, the side for rent and he goes to meet the landlord of the mall. Now, the landlord starts asking him questions that he can't answer, financial questions. He says, you know, what do you think your annual turnover is going to be? What your revenue is going to be? And then as the landlord starts telling him, you know, how many hours he's got to be open, what the mall requirements are, what all the other payments are, what the insurance is he has to carry, what money he has to put into his advertising, but how much he has to participate in mall activities and pay for for the mall advertisements and everything else. <clears throat> well, the numbers are flashing through his head and he doesn't need, these are things he hadn't even thought about yet. Well, that's just like a trader. All of these things you haven't thought of yet. But now he goes home and he's got to start listing them on his piece of paper. Okay. He calls the insurance agent. He calls the bank. He does all of his stuff. Now, the insurance agent's glad to sell him insurance. And the insurance agent's experience. So he knows exactly what the guy's got to have. And he tells the guy it's going to be $20,000 a year. The guy almost falls off his chair. Doesn't have that in his budget. Then he goes to the bank and the bank says, yeah, well, we can help you with some credit lines, but we need a business plan. And then it comes time he needs the money because he hires a contractor who bids out the job and he's got to start paying for stuff. So he calls his friend and he calls his brother and he calls his mom and dad in and they all still want to give him the money. But they said, hey, kiddo, we need a plan. We need to understand whether we're loaning you the money, whether we're investing how much we're getting for our investment, what kind of interest you're paying on a loan, when we can expect to get paid. If it's an investment, how much should we own of your shop? When are we gonna have meetings? When are you gonna tell us what the profit is? When do you expect that we will ever see any profit out of the shop? Oh, what do they want? They want stuff on paper. They want his business plan. Well, a trading plan is your business plan for trading in the markets. And it's a checklist because you'll eventually put everything together. Now, if you notice, this guy had a couple months to get all this done because he was building and building up to this point. So do you. You don't have to do it off the bat. Too many people get freaked out when I talk about this because they think, ah, I can't even trade. I got to put all this on paper. It's going to take me forever. And then they give up on it. But you don't have to do it. Your trading plan is important, but you can build on it. You can keep adding on to it forever. <clears throat> But stop and think. Right now, if you've got an account open, you're going to open an account, you're going to go and make your first trade. You might have this whole strategy you studied with your buddy or you read about on the internet and you did some research and you got this whole plan. Okay. If oil does this and gold does that, I'm going to do this. Well, in your head, that plan is really nice. But when you put it on a piece of paper, you realize you left out a whole bunch of steps to get from A to B to C. But you see, when you put it on paper, what are you doing is taking that thoughts out of your head 
and realizing all of those things. Like I write a lot of content. I write a lot of videos, scripts for trading. And I find half the time I write video scripts, they all look fine when I get them out of, when I get them in my head and then get them on paper. But what happens is when I'm putting them together to put video and doing the, getting ready to do the voiceover, find out they don't run smoothly to, for video. They run smoothly in a, you know, I was reading content, but they don't run smoothly for a video. Some lines are too long, some lines are too short. You can't fit in the, the, the screens in the back to fit everything you want with the screen, you know, the calls and everything. And when you work it out, you tend to fix things. You tend to finalize things. You tend to find the mistakes. And it will be important. Okay. Now, there's a lot of components that have to go in this trading plan. Because it's not just your trading strategy, but that's the way to start. Start by writing down whatever first strategy you're going to use. Because like me, I have about 25, 30, 40 different strategies, all depending on the market and the asset. Okay. So that drops into the center of your, your plan. But the rest of your plan doesn't change. Okay. Like what hours of the day you're willing to trade? How many days a week can you trade? Because the markets are different depending on days and time of the day. Markets are different depending on time, the days of the week. A Monday market is much diff more different than a Friday market. The market when the Asian session opens is a lot different than the Asian European session opens or early American market to the later American market. All of them have their own different personalities. So you have to first in your trading plan decide what assets you'll trade, what time of day you trade, how often you'll trade. There's so many people I see today online trading, they flip on their phone and when they walk, you know, they, they got 15 minutes in between meetings and office, they flip on their phone, they look something, they see a trade and they make the trade. No, that 15 minutes should have been spent reading about the markets, studying a plan, reading about a strategy or analyzing your charts, not just randomly trading. Because when people come to the markets and they lose their money and they wanna come back and scream, Forex is a scam, CFD is a ripoff. Nobody's scamming you, nobody's ripping you off. You're trading with a well-known regulated provider. Well, they're just providing you trading opportunities. It's you that doesn't wanna do the time and effort and is trading randomly. So you want to test your plan in the beginning to make sure you are on the right track. After you've begun trading, continue testing it regularly. This allows you to measure your success by clearly seeing what works and what doesn't work. From there, you can tweak elements that might be weaker and not contributing to your overall goal. Ask yourself the following question, and the answers to these will assist you in your foundation. What am I trading? If your immediate answer is to make money or why am I trading, you should stop right there. If the only goal is to make as much money as fast as we can, we are ultimately doomed because it will never be enough. Managing your loss and understanding your risk should be your primary goal with every single trade, every single day, every single thing you're doing. If you're minimizing your risk, and minimizing your losses, you will stay in the markets because when you make profit, it will offset your small risks. Because nobody, and I've been trading for a lot of years, since 1972, and I cannot trade consecutively over and over and over and over correct. And if I only tried to pick correct trades, I'd never trade at all. Sure, we're trying to use our strategy to only end up with high probability trades, but the market is only about human beings. The market is totally random. So when you have a good trade and you make profit, you shouldn't be paying it back to cover your losses. But now if you have one good trade and three small losses and you net out a good profit, that's all that you can ask for. So once you've got your risk and your loss, you will have the environment to make profits. So where do you start? You should begin your trading plan with your trading strategies. So if you're trading price action setups, like I'm a price action trader, and I trade basically from support and resistance and chart patterns, that's it. Okay. 
this is how I trade. This is my preference, not yours. Okay. But you can be a structured trader. You can be advanced patterns. You can be off key level support. You can be a guy who trades off of a combination of indicators. Okay. You can trade based on stocks on, on earnings reports. Okay. You, you decide what you want to trade. But you first need to back test all your strategies in order to find out whether they positive, have positive expectancy, simply put, making money or not. Many trading strategies will work for you for a couple of days, maybe sometimes a couple of months, but they're not, they don't stand up the test of time because you might have, like right now, we have a really weird, highly volatile market with lots of risk off trading. Okay. This is going to take place over the, you know, it's been taking place for the last five weeks and it's probably going to go on for another couple of weeks. So a lot of times the strategy will work through all this and then you'll keep on trading. And in June, July, and August, when the world's gone back to normal, hopefully, you find out you lost all your money because that strategy didn't work in that market. Now, having written strategy with your risk tolerance and your money management is like having a market blueprint. This blueprint is essential for developing the discipline that will lead you on the road to success. So what you want to do is what are my strengths and weaknesses? You need to know yourself. Like I'm an, unfortunately an emotional trader. And therefore knowing that I can control it. Okay. So how do I maximize my strengths to minimize my weaknesses? Once you decide on what type of trader are, and you can be a swing trader, you can be a day trader. For instance, if I get in four or five trades a week, that's a lot for me. Okay. I trade swing trades. Most of my trades last from one to five days. Okay. Sometimes two weeks, three weeks. Okay. I'm not a day trader. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Now, today with CFDs, there's a big difference between a day trader and a CFD trader. Now, with CFDs, most CFDs close in the same day, but they don't have the rules a day trader has to have. Because, like in the US, you have to tell your broker you're a day trader, okay? And you have certain regulatory requirements as a day trader. Okay. CFDs can be left open as long as you like, as long as you can cover the, the, the swing of the markets and don't get stopped out. So you wanna evaluate your needs and the effort required. Because you know what? If you're a guy with a full-time job and you're only gonna trade two days a week or you're a weekend, I can do my research on a weekend, I can trade on Tuesdays and Thursdays, this is you. You need to figure out who you are and what you can do and put it down. You're not the guy who's going to trade Tuesdays because I don't have a date and then Wednesday mornings because I don't have to be in the office till 11 o'clock and I'm going to trade Thursday afternoons. And if I don't have anything going on over the weekend, maybe I'll do some studying and maybe on Monday morning, I'll make a trade. You'll lose your money and you'll be gone. Then you have to decide, am I a fundamental trader or am I a technical trader? Now, none of us should be one or the other, but a technical trader means he uses mostly technical or charts, and he pays attention to the fundamental news. A fundamental trader means he pays attention to the news, finds his trade, and then uses a chart for an entry and exit the point. But creating a strategy using fundamental and technical tools is key. But first, we need to learn a little about each of these types. Some traders choose to use fundamental analysis to assist with their trading, this type of analysis is based on news. News can be considered anything ranging from economic, political, or even environmental events. As a result, fundamental analysis is much more subjective. Other traders may choose to use technical analysis to drive their trading decisions. This type of analysis is more definitive and relies more on math and probabilities. So you wanna match your goals to your trading styles. Now, you know, if you go into the, you know, the online world and go search in Google, you can find a billion software programs for building a business plan and not for building a business plan. You can download, you can buy everything, business plan in a box. You go online and try to find something on how to build a trading strategy and how to build a trading plan, you'll find virtually nothing. You find lots of blog articles that tell you the same thing over and over again, because there isn't a formula. And this is a problem, okay? Because when I want to start a new business or I want to work with somebody or help somebody out do some consulting on a business, and you know, 
we can pull up these spreadsheets and drop all the numbers in and the terms and everything else, do some market, and we got everything. Don't have that in trading. So a strategy is a step-by-step -step systematic approach. Oh, now, let me back up. Because there's lots of gurus out there who are going to tell you, do my way, do this, do that, do this, follow this, follow me blindly and do what I'm telling you, and you'll make money. Please. Trading is about individual experience, knowledge, and you understanding what you're doing, not understanding what somebody else is telling you. And you'll find that's when you'll last in the markets, when you take what he's telling you, you pull it apart and repackage it as your own. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can take a strategy that you like. You can take some guru who's out there selling you some kind of, not selling you, but pushing his strategy. Take it, pull it apart, understand it, tweak it, test it, make it your strategy. So a strategy is a step-by-step, -step, a systematic approach to how and when we are going to use tools, developing a sequence of analysis. Because what you're doing ultimately is you're looking to filter out bad trades and get good trades. And you're still kind of filter them down to the only end up with high probability trades. Now, the types of analysis are fundamental or technical or both. We want to decide what time frames we're going to work in. And all this is written down because it's not a flexible thing. You're not going to move from one day being a technical trader next to be a fundamental trader. And the next day using half hour charts and five minute charts, the next day using one hour charts and 30 minute charts. Uh-uh. You need to set everything down in stone because this is business and you need to follow your rules. You, have, you can make your own rules, but you need to follow them over and over. And this is one of my downfalls. I have a hard problem with that. Okay. So before I ever push a button to open an order, I go back and check everything. And having notes on my walls and checklists make me go back and check. Then one of the most important things to do and one of the biggest downfalls we have today in online trading is we have too many choices. We are allowed to get in there and look at Facebook one minute, look at the FTSE the next minute, look at the Dow Jones the next minute, look at gold the next minute. I can't tell you how many traders have sent me emails today about oil. You know, it's made all the headlines and papers. They're thinking they can jump in and trade oil at zero dollars. Good luck. Yes, CFDs were looking for short-term positions, but oil jumped back up to thirteen dollars a few minutes later, and then it dropped down from thirteen to eight dollars. Well, thirteen dollars. I mean, one of my best friends called me and said, "I want to get into oil." I said, "Then well, you know what? The best thing to do right now is probably ETS for your situation. Go find out who offers the ETFs." you know, in your locale, you know, with what, find a, a situation, a broker, an investment house. So he came back and said his bank is offering. He said, okay, but they offer 20 different crude oil ETFs. You need to find out about each one, what they are, what the rules are, what the costs are, what the commissions are. He said, but I don't want to miss this opportunity. I said, the market always offers other opportunities. Just because you didn't trade oil at $13 and you thought it was going to go up to $60 eventually, well, it will eventually. But can you ride out that risk when it fell to $8? You know, it's the market volatility and understanding how much you can risk for trade and understanding your trades. Now, about a plan, it's a word I came up with, stick to itness. You need to create a trading plan that's useful as it reduces the possibility of bad or irrational decisions based on emotion. Me, 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 okay? I'm admitting it, it's me. If you have a written trading plan, then you have a trading filter that will filter only high probability trading opportunities. It is important that, to have a written plan because in order to keep a high level of discipline, you should read it every day. The key to discipline and objective Forex trading is to establish a trading plan where you put all your necessary rules and stick to it. Now, today with online platforms, half the stuff you have to write down is easy because every trade, 
when you opened it, what price you closed it at, what it did, whether you made profit, because you can just export that directly out of your trading account. But you need to have the notes because you need to put in put notes what strategy you used to do it, why you made this trade, how much you risked on this trade, because you want a history of it. So next year when you see this happening again, you can go back and say, oh, I screwed up last year. I lost my money. And this is why I overlooked that. Now, if I ask 100 traders that they will send me a copy of their trading plan, I guarantee you nobody ever will. I don't think in all of this time that I've been teaching, which is over 12 years now, that anybody has ever sent me a copy of the trading plan. Unlike business owners who generally have a business plan in order to provide a strategic vision to employees and to stay focused on their primary line of business, most traders never take the time to create a business plan. Now, let's go back to my friend who opened the mall, the store in the mall. He did all this. He created his business plan. He got to the bank, got his line of credit, you know, got his money from his mom and dad and his brothers. He got everything, his lawyers, no, his lawyers, so God knows how much money, but he's got it all done. But now he forgot about getting a time clock. He forgot about getting the register program. He forgot about maxing and keep and uploading all of his inventory to his computers. He forgot about how many employees he'd have to hire. And he forgot about what he has to offer them. And does he, where does he get medical insurance? Where does he get disability insurance? And what is he going to use for a payroll service? He forgot all of that. Then now when he sits down and calculates the hours the mall told him he has to be open, and he realized he has to open by nine o'clock every day and stay open till eight o'clock every night, he realizes he needs a lot of employees. And then he's gonna hire lots, mostly college kids, and they're not gonna wanna work all day every day. They're not gonna be full-time employees. How is he gonna get them all? How is he gonna keep track of them? What's how is he gonna train them? That's beyond his business plan. That's the next step. Well, you know what? He opens up in time. He's, he gets open in November. He gets all the Christmas sales. The store's doing really good. Everybody's patting him on the back. But come January, the stores and shelves are empty. And he looks in the back room. He's got no inventory. Because he didn't realize he's got to reorder inventory almost weekly because he's selling out of stock. And what he's got in the back, he's got lots of larges and no mediums and smalls because he didn't test what he was doing. He didn't keep on top of his business. He didn't learn, he didn't figure it all out because he was so busy on the floor selling and ringing up a register and getting deposits and writing checks to everybody. He lost control of his business. He can get it back, but it's hard because you need to keep track of everything. So one of the most important things to a trader is how do you evaluate your performance? Now, this is crucial. Now, my rule of thumb is after every 10 trades, I stop everything. I cannot open a trade in my little plan until I've analyzed every single trade, make sure everyone's written up on my spreadsheets, make sure I have all the details and understand exactly what's happened. Then I can go on and make my next trade because like we were talking about my friend in oil, in our world, time is irrelevant. Trading is one of the few arenas in this realm where the space-time continuum is no relevance. First of all, it doesn't cost you any money leaving your money in account. There's no monthly fees, there's no overhead, there's no electricity, there's no insurance, there's no employees, there's no nothing. Your money can sit there. And the world of finance offers trading opportunities by the ton. So it's not like you're going to miss this one opportunity today because you've been busy doing your analysis and there's going to be no opportunity tomorrow. There's always opportunities. So those of us that have been trading for some time know that one year stellar trading point can be wiped out by a month of bad trades, time the market moved against you. The way to address this is tracking your performance is to create a set number of trades. Now, for me, that number is 10. It doesn't have to be the same for you, okay? You just have to determine what it is. This applies to both my swing trades and my day trading. On the average, it takes me about three months to place 10 swing trades and about four days to place about 10 day trades. I only mention this time element so you see how long it takes me to place that number of trades. And I will live in this market 24 seven. 
So what is the number of trades you will use when evaluating your trading activity? Now, what met metrics will you use to evaluate your trade? It's not, did I make profit? Did I not make profit? It's first question is, did, was this a good trade or a bad trade? A trade that you lost money on is not a bad trade. A trade that went against you and you stopped out intentionally at minimal risk could is a perfectly good trade. A trade that made you profit and you were expecting 25 pips and it made you 60 pips, made you really happy, but that was not necessarily a good trade because maybe you did some wrong evaluation because you didn't see the 60 profit possibility, you only saw the 25 possibility. And remember, identify the assets you are wanting to trade. Okay, I started to mention this before. In the world of online trading, you can be everywhere. None of us can spend the time understanding and getting into what Facebook is all about and what its numbers mean, while at the same time trying to track what's going on with the euro, at the same time trying to happen what was going on with HSBC, at the same time trying to figure out what's going on with Bitcoin. Can't do it. You can't physically do it. Can't mentally do it. What you should do is find a small range of assets that have some correlation. Like me, I predominantly trade the euro, the euro dollar, the euro, the dollar pound, the dollar with the strength. I trade the Australian dollar now and then, but that's it. I, I say very limited because I can spend my focus, my time, and my efforts staring at these. I understand their personalities. I understand what the expectations are. I can remember what they did last week, last month, two months ago. I remember what they traded last year. When you're trading hundreds of assets all over the place, you can't remember if you traded gold last year when it was 1,400. Do you remember? No, you can't because you were all over the place. But goals are very important. You need to get to work, stick to it, and reach your goal. Because a goal without a plan is just a wish. Okay. Now, your trading strategies are very important, but you can use anything from a simplistic moving average crossover to a very involved strategy. It's up to you. But things like, first thing I do every morning is I look at my support and resistance levels. I look at my trend lines. I look what the assets are looking at. I look at my charts. I'm not even thinking about a trade. These are things I have to look at every day. I look at the economics counter. I wanna know everything that's going on. So part of my trading plans, I do this, this, and this. I'm not interested in trading. If you find your satisfaction comes from just trading, then you're in the wrong place. If you take a professional football player who spends all week long at practice, spends days at scrimmages, he spends hours every day learning his plays. Then he spends hours a day learning his this week's competition's plays. What players he's going to be matched up against. What his team's going to do. All of that he's putting into just Sunday's game. His reward for all of that work is winning on Sunday. So if a professional football player has to do that, why don't you have to do that to get your professional trader and get your trade or your win on Saturday, okay? Everybody has to put the work in, but when you do, you will find you can be successful, okay? Always put your stop loss in. Now, part of your strategy is how will you decide where to put your stop loss? Whether you take the last swing low before you enter the markets, you know, we can figure out how we will place our stops. How much we're willing to risk per trade, what our risk reward ratio is. Then we want to figure out when we what exit strategy we're going to use. Every trade should have an exit strategy because this is part of your plan. How do I exit this trade? Well, if I see the markets turning against me, even though I didn't get stopped out, if it's not doing exactly what I thought it would do, I'm going to leave this trade. So, and lastly, or one of the most important things is how much money can I invest per trade and how much will I have in the market at any given time? I think guys that tell me, ah, I don't, I never have risked more than $500 per trade. But he's got 20 open trades. That means he's got $10,000 in the markets. So the markets go sour, what, like when we had the, the coronavirus scare, 
all the markets went sour, everything went tumbling, the volatility was so crazy, everybody's getting stopped out everywhere. Well, guess what? He could have lost his shirt because he didn't have $500 at risk. He had $10,000 at risk. So you have to figure out, number one, what I'll risk per trade. How many trades can I have open at any given time? And then one of the last key factors, when do I take breaks? Now, for me, after every 100 trades, we're not talking about vacation. So I do my evaluation after every 10 trades. And after 20, 10 times of doing those evaluations, guess what? For the next two days, I don't turn on my computer. I don't go to my trading platform. I stop and clear my head. I don't, listen, I'm not going on vacation. I'm not stopping to work. I'm just not following the markets because what I'm doing is I'm taking a breath and I'm taking control of the markets back. Like I said, this is not vacation. It's not a holiday time off. Just say for 24 hours, I'm not going to look at my platform. I'm not going to look at my charts because I don't take a day off. I spend Saturday and Sunday evaluating the markets and looking at my charts. Preparing for the next week. And then we have the limit up, limit down. If you start off your first trade in the morning and you lose, the market goes again to you, open up a trade and you get stopped out in 15 minutes. Don't try to make that money back. In fact, close your platform, close your books, close your thing, go off and play golf. Because once you get irritable, you tend to push the envelope and what you do is you start chasing your losses or if your first trade day i mean i've had days where i've opened a trade and something has happened you know not even important in the market and you open gold at 1500 and it popped up to 1550 in two seconds you took your 50 dollars profit you made 500 bucks do the same thing go play golf because when you get too excited or too aggravated, you'll tend to make mistakes. So learn to walk away from your platform. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to find a trading plan on the internet. The one I show you on the screen <laughs> is one of the only ones I was able to find. And it's absurd, okay? It's so minimalistic, it's so ridiculous questions, I would never trade them. So I did put together some type of guidance for you. So if you look on your screen, you'll see a handout that says Combined Trading Plan Handout. Okay. It's just a whole bunch of notes and guides and information that might help you get started in the right way. Just click the download button. There's nothing you have to register for, nothing you have to pay for, nothing you have to do. It's just there. It's a PDF file, download it. I also gave you a very good strategy that you might want to start out. It's all written out for you. And you might want to start with this if you don't have any strategies developed. It's a good strategy to start building your strategy from. So click the download buttons and download them now because you can't get them after the live class. You only get them in live class. And like I said, there's nothing you have to register for. They're yours. Put them on your mobile device. Put them on your, you know, your, your tablet. And you can move them around wherever you want later. There's just PDF files. and if you do have any questions, you want some guidance, you want some help, go to LegacyFX, www.legacyfx.com and click on the chat now button or send them an email and they'll give you a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a financial analyst who will help you along the way. And what you can do in the meantime is go to www.legacyfx.com and download their MetaTrader 5 platform in demo mode and start using the demo mode and testing out your ideas and writing them down and start building your trading strategy from there. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope you're all safe and sound. You know, the world's a crazy place at the moment, but this is a time to put your time and energy into learning. And this is the perfect time to start writing a trading plan because you have nothing, most of us have nothing but a lot of extra time at the moment. So thank you very much and best wishes in the marketplace. Bye now.